Coming here live inside Red Devil Park, Byron Bay. This is round nine of the Labrokes and Triple RL competition for 2019. The Byron Bay Red Devils versus the Maris Brothers Rams. The end Triple RL is proudly brought to you by Labrokes. Download the app today or head over to labrokes.com.au for all your betting information and gamble responsibly. Dwayne Neville here with Michael Shaw coming to you live from Red Devil Park between 8th and 9th place. The Byron Bay Red Devils and Maris Brothers. So, Shory, what do we need to know of the tail of tape for the Morris Brothers Rams? Morris Brothers Rams in at fullback, Jacob Follant. Uh, number two, Try Murray. Number three, Brody Jones. Number four, Josh Patson. On the wing in number five, Aiden Haywood. Going in at the halves in Paul O'Neill, captaining the squad. In at halfback, Jay Mihaly. Uh, starting the front row, Lockie Perrin in number eight. Number nine, hooker, Mitch Slaven. In at number 10 is Jake Hoban. Number 11, Jacob Rose. Number 12, Matthew Tickle. 13, we're not playing. 14, Marcus Hannaway. 15, we have Blake O'Connor. Number 16, Chris King. And rounding out the bench in number 17, Alessio Staveman. And 18, Azian Brown. And for the Byron Bay Red Devils, Todd Carney, who's the captain coach, has, has still got that niggling rib injury he is out on what is today his birthday he is take the captain duty to go to Mitchell Krause playing against his ex-squad today he's in the back line with Gabe Belcher Dan Gibson and Scott Stapleton Terence Ferguson makes his debut for A grade as we get underway Byron Bay running left to right on your screen Ben Crawford and Brad Lees are in the halves and in the forwards we have Cole Kennedy Andrew Batiste and Ben Malloy Sean Hilton and Matt Gallagher in the second row and locking the scrum is Kane Montgomery on the bench is Dalton Shaw, Dylan Montgomery, Lachlan Kennedy and Kian Laurie. And as we just got here underway, Josh Gollan is drawing the assignment in the centre. He's assisted by Peter Pencil O'Connor. So as we, on the third tackle there, that was well taken up there by Brody Jones, who was a late addition in the centres from when the teams came out on Wednesday there, Shory. Yeah, Byron Bay really looking for a win here today. It's been a while. It's been three to four uh, losses in a row, and they want this win to stay in the t into finals contention. They'll be playing hard for it today. Of course, Byron Bay, they've had about three unfortunate losses on the bounce, including that 30 to six loss to Ballina, where for me, they were in the game for about 50 minutes of the 80 there, Shory. And Morris Brothers, they had a string of losses going into the two, but they despite being close, actually did get up against Northern United 30 points to 20 in last week's game at Lismore, the Lismore Derby. So this is Batiste, nicely taking the hit up there on the halfway line. Yeah, it's their second half. They're going to have to come home strong. They've led the first half in the past three matches. Uh, now, so the second half's really where they've got to come strong. And, and uh, speaking to some of the players and coach, that's what they've been training for this week. I could actually probably one up on you there, Shory. The Iron Bay have actually been in front or level in the case of last week's game in all their games this year. So um, when I was speaking to Todd Carney post-game, he needs he knows that, that this second half performance needs to be on point to beat this Marish Brothers team. And that this could already be proven early. Try that's down into the hands. Oh, that was Brad Lees. Only had himself to beat. And he knows it too, Brad Lees. That was definitely the first points beckoning there for the Byron Bay Red Devils. And at what they've learned over the past weeks, they need to make the most of these opportunities, Shory, because it's going to cost them. They do, but it is a good sign that they've got a strong kicking game. What Todd Carney brings to the Red Devils is a sensational kicking game. He can put the ball wherever he wants it. So it's good to see that uh, the fill in there, you know, uh, who was that? Number seven's kicked it. Brad Lee. Brad Lee's. Brad Lee. That was Brad Lee's actually with it there, Shory. Okay, yeah. So he's put it in a good spot and uh, hopefully give a bit of confidence. Good field position and get those good kicks. Unfortunately, a piggyback penalty out of Morris Brothers, 20th. So as we go into this one, the Byron Bay Red Devils, they come in here in eighth position with a two and four record. And we, they could go to as high as six if um, some results go their way and they do pick up the two points today. This is basically a crossroads game for both teams out there if they have any ambitions of getting in the top five. So a win could send to Byron a high six. If they lose, they will go to ninth. All right, so it was a knock-on by Morris Brothers. So Byron Bay got really good field position here in the oppositions uh, with good hit up up until 12 metres out of Morris Brothers' try line. So this will be Batiste to play. Gets in the hands of Dylan Montgomery, who was starting from the bench, but so he must have been a late addition to the 13. Yeah, so Montgomery's one of their stronger players. Not surprised to see him out there. So this is Crawford. Gets it into the hands. That's going into Matt Gallagher. 
Little hit and spin. He's brought well down there in the tackle by Pats. And he also does a little late offload. That's Dan Gibson. Go Norley looks good. Bradley's will get it this time. Oh, what a, what a make-up. He'll feel, be happy about that. He didn't drop that one. Good start from Byron Bay Red Devils. Good try. Easy inside ball. Bradley's that pace running into the line. So Bradley's, uh, after being unlucky in the first couple of minutes, has redeemed himself there with four points to nil over the Morris Brothers Rams here at Red Devil Park in Byron Bay. Yeah, it's looking good. Nice, comfortable 19 degrees here. Uh, overcast day. There was some early rain this morning, but it doesn't seem, watching the reserve grade play, it doesn't seem too slippery out there, so it should be good uh, Good temperature for rugby league. Shorey, I was just saying there, when I was reading out the team list, that the captain duties have indeed gone to Matt, to Mitchell Krause, who has just come back from an injury himself, as you might have seen on the live stream against Kyogle. He was off, and only he's been off for about three or four weeks, and so it's probably worth mentioning that, I don't know if this is a ploy by Todd Carney or not, but... When Mitchell Krause made his debut for Byron Bay last year it was against the Maris Brothers Rams, and I can recall watching that game that his reception with, from the Maris Brothers away, travelling away squad and his ex-teammates was about as frosty as, let's say, a, cha um, a night, a July night in Chapel Street, wearing just um, shorts, thongs, and uh, and a singlet. It was that frosty, and that as frosty as New Park in Kogel. No, <laughs> I, I think Byron's really missed having Krause on the team. He scores a lot of tries. He really passionate players so though Byron have had these losses they haven't had Krause and he's miss, uh, Batiste has missed that kick so Byron Bay four up on the, on Morris Brothers but yeah I think he brings a lot to the team he pushes pumps the lads up and he's and he scores a lot of tries so as that still remains four points to nil Byron Bay looking for early getting early points but as I was making mention as you can see on the library scoreboard there um, it's as I said, Byron Bay have always had the rub of the green, and, and a lot of those games they've scored. They were the first try scorers, if not early in the in the contest. But it matters for little unless they um, fix up their second half performance and play the full 80 minutes. Yeah, certainly. It's well, it's a good start from the Bay, and good field position here, spreading it out to the left. So this is looking some promising meters there for the Byron Bay Red Devils, playing on the short side. It's going to be Dylan Montgomery. He's already looking for a lot of early work there, Dylan Montgomery. For me, one of their best players from last week, Shory, um, and that's Batiste playing on the short side, gets it into the hands. That is Sean Hinton. So they've done well to get about 35 metres. They're playing that short side a lot there, Shory. That's Batiste going himself. He's brought down the tackle by Brody Jones. Yeah, they, a, they've brought a lot of energy in the forward pack strong. So that, so that is Mitchell Krause. And I think uh, Josh Gollan there is just going to call him up for a forward pass. So Morris Brothers will have the scrum feed about 10 metres away from their own line. Yeah, it's good. It's good uh, sets of six from both teams. Unfortunately, Morris have conceded the try for them. But yeah, it's going to be. It's going to get whoever gets the points. These two points today is going to take them off uh, the lower end of the table. And as you said, very important for finals ambitions. So Brad Lee's that was his second try um, of the campaign. His first one coming against Mwollumbah Mustangs a couple of weeks ago. He's an ex-Tweed -tweed Seagulls and Trust Super Cup player. And you know, a handy addition in the halves uh, with the likes of Todd Carney not featuring today. So this will be Morris Brothers now to play about oh, 35 metres out from their own line. This will be played by Slavin. Sure, Matt Slavin has really impressed me in dummy half attack. As I was covering one of his games a couple of weeks ago against Kyogle. He's, he's probably up there for probably the dummy half of the year from what I've seen thus far. When you've got the likes of like Joshua Besgrove from Moolambar and you've got Andrew Batiste and... Uh, just to name a couple, and you'd think you'd, you'd be looking to be dummy half of the year when the awards get put out. Yeah, I look forward to playing. I haven't watched the Morris Brothers game this season, so I look forward to hearing what the hype's about. So this is Paul O'Neill. The captain sends that one up. Gonna, should be collected there by Kraus. Does well to... He's going to go around Aiden Haywood. He's going along the short side. He's just, uh, just brought down there about 45 metres away from the Byron Bay line. This is going to be taken up there by Gabe Belcher. He's got a lot of pace, Crouch, and really good. Uh, he, he can see the play really well, find the holes and run it. Oh, nice big here. Well read a defence out by the Morris brothers. It's probably worth also noting too there for, um, for the case of the Byron Bay Red Devils, whilst all their losses this year have come when they've considered 23 points or more, the only time they've been held themselves to single digits was, of course, last week's game against the Ballon of Seagulls. They've scored double digits in all their other games. So that's... It's, it's not worth uh, um, all downhill for the Bay, but they also need to know it's their uh, defence is the key where they need to fix up there, Shory. Yeah, and I think it's uh, 
if they can get a good win without uh, their captain coach, Todd Carney, on the field, it's got to give them a lot of confidence going forward. So proves they are a strong team in their so own Brad right. Brad has collected that. He's going himself. It looks promising for Brad Lees, but he's just thrown that one away. I don't think he needed to throw that. He could have fallen over the line. A few early cobwebs for him. Two tries in the space of 10 minutes was looking promising there for Brad Lees, but uh, yeah, we'd never know. Uh, um, it would have looked promising going south, but I think there was about four players there onto him. So we did have a, we have had some rain over the part uh, this weekend here in Byron Bay, and whilst we we've been spared of it for the last you know couple of hours, and that ground out there is definitely very damp to say the least. I'm not sure if I'd uh, give him that excuse. So threw that <laughs> to the side. Here they oh, you're go. a hard man, sure. You're a hard man. We get back now to live action. This would be Mitch Slavin now to play it about. Uh, what's happened here is um, Byron Bay have considered a penalty. So that's the other thing that I've noticed um, covering a few Byron Bay games there, sure, is that um, they were very impressive in, with discipline um, for that 50 of the 80 minutes against Bowen last week. But I think um, once they were considered a few tries, they just kind of, the knees buckled and the discipline went out the window. And that's some of the key to victory there for the Byron Bay Red Devils is their discipline. Yeah, it'll be good. Uh, I look forward to seeing a close game. Always like, oh, he's lost it there. So, yeah, that, that ground is... That, that ball is already getting there. a bit damp. It's can, it's gone both ways for, for both teams thus far. And um, as Maris Brothers, they're coming this one at ninth position. A win, win will also send them to as high as... Or at least tied six. And a loss for them will send them down to ten. So, sure, this is very much whilst we're at the halfway point of the, the current campaign... A loss for either team here could really um, make them think about um, the end of the road being for them for come August time. Yeah, I'm sure it's on both teams' minds, the captain, coaches, and they'll be playing for it today. So strap yourselves in for a great game. Beautiful offload so there by Kraus. So that's Gabe Belcher. This will be played now by Mitchell Kraus, the acting captain. And oh, and then it's been, as I just mentioned, it's been the case for both teams. And there's a little bit of scuffle. And as I said, there's Mitchell Kraus. And I think it, uh, it's, it's all just, smiles. It's just picking up from where where they left off in round one of last year. Shorey, um, we didn't have the live streams at that point, but he was absolutely caught, copped a lot from his ex Morris brothers teammates at that for that game. Yeah, I think some of the heat's worn off. I've seen a few exchanges between Mitchell Krause and his former teammates, and there seems to be uh, smiles and pats on the head. So <laughs> we'll see how we go. We're only five or so minutes in. So in, on the first phase there, it's taken up there, 30 metres away there from the Morris Brothers line. This will be Slave in the play, and he's going on the short, sorry, in the short side into the hands there of Jacob Rose. Sorry, that is um, Jake Hoban. He's, he's a late change from lock to the to the front row. Just Lockie Perrin there, big, strong player. Looking forward to seeing him play today. Here's another player who's impressed me. Sure, he's a, he played a bit of rep footy this year for the Northern Rivers Titans. This is Slave and gets it into the hands of Brody Jones. Oh, a nice crunching tackle. He manages to get a get the quick offload. That's going into the hands of Blake O'Connor. And he's going to do well to get inside for the 40-metre area for the Byron Bay Red Devils. And it takes the likes of Andrew Batiste to bring him down, as well as Matt Gallagher, Slavin. That's there is a battle of the hookers there, but Batiste versus Slavin. That's always that's going to be proven to be a pivotal contest between the two. This is going to be now Paul O'Neill brings it into Jacob Rose. And... It's going to be held there about 20 metres out. That is now the fifth and last. And we're in just the first 10 minutes of this contest. Um, that was well taken there by Andrew Batiste. He should get the ball back. And they'll have that one on the first tackle there, about 25 metres out from the Byron Bay line. And that's going to be played off there by Dan Gibson. Yeah, well diffused there by Batiste. Got Byron out a lot of trouble. And they're playing it forward now. That's Krause from dummy half into the hands of Montgomery. He gets it in the hands of Ben Crawford. And, oh, that was spilt there by Sean Hinton. So... That they, you can see their try, Murray there applauding. He knows now that they're invaluable. Set of six deep inside the Byron Bay half to potentially level this game. Yeah, Morris Brothers having a lot of really good offloads here, and Byron just forced a couple there and making a couple of mistakes. So, good game. So the, the players to watch for for the Morris Brothers, you've got to look at like the likes of Jacob Rose and Josh Patson, both on currently on four tries each for this campaign. Morris Brothers have had the, had the wood over Byron Bay coming into this one. They won the last six against Byron Bay. Previous to that, Byron won the last three. The last time these two teams played, Morris Brothers getting up 34 points to 10. And the last time they played here was, I mentioned it, round one, 34-16. And 
you got to go to the back to the likes of two thousand. Well, it would have been like the two thousand and I believe fifteen season before Byron Bay managed to get the chocolates over the Morris Brothers Rams. They need to get it done here today. No question about it. If they have any ambitions for finals. Well, so the Morris Brothers are looking pretty strong and attacky, Ashori. So this is Slavin. Normally, he's influenced for points. Gets it in the hands of Lockie Perrin. They are. They're quite, playing quite simple football. Just running it straight up the centre. So there's Slavin. Slavin's going himself. He's so sh close to the line there, Mitch Slavin. He just had too many bodies there. Big bodies of the Byron Bay Red Devils to hold him up. So that's going to be... Well, with the last turnover. Yeah, so smack bang right on the try line. So... They'll be looking for some quick defense here, the Morris brothers, to potentially force an error or maybe even push to the dead ball line. I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, they make you a lot of ground running up the center, but they, if they want to score a try, I think they kind of have to spread it out to either So there's side. Montgomery, there's Shorey, does well to get about 30 meters on the fly. They really needed to get in the hands of Dylan Montgomery to really get out of that danger zone. That's from Ben Crawford, gets it into the hands. That is, I think, he's there, Kane Montgomery. And then, yeah, Morris brothers, they've just forced the penalty, so... Set of six now, beckons out for the Byron Bay, potentially inside the Morris Brothers half the field. Yeah, Dylan Montgomery does so much hard work for the Byron Bay Red Devils. Got them out of danger there. Great kick. Well, wow, they've got really good field position here, 20, uh, uh, 30 metres out from the Morris Brothers line. So Morris Brothers, they know if they have to get this done today, they're going to have to do what they've done twice this year. Both of their wins, when they, when they did win their two games, it was score when they scored 30 points or more. They've conceded 18 or more in every game this season, though. So they need to, they too need to fix their defence. It's really going to come down to who can defend, sure, more so than who can attack the best. And as I mentioned that, the Byron Bay Red Devils are just about to double their lead. Nice try there. I believe that to be Sean Hinton there, Shorey, that's added the points there for the Byron Bay Red Devils. Yeah, great play. They, Byron are just a bit more creative using that back line, moving it out to the wings and finding the gaps, put it in the holes. Eight points to nil. Byron Bay Red Devils over the Morris Brothers Rams. Kick to follow. And as you can see there, proudly sponsored by Ladbrokes. Android or iPhone stores. Download the app set today. Ladbrokes.com.au for all the latest betting information and, of course, gamble responsibly. Sean Hinnon is... A late addition into this squad for the Byron Bay Red Devils. One of the two ins for this team with the likes of Mitchell Krause. And of course, um, Terence Ferguson uh, as well coming into this 17 from last week's squad. As I mentioned, Connor Wilson, Abe Crawford and Todd Carney. Not uh, the omissions coming into this one. So Sean Hinton, he was an ex-Warhope -War Blues in Group 3. He represented East Coast Dolphins at a Gold Coast competition level. Played for the Tweed Seagulls. Uh, Patrice has been kicking really well this year. Wouldn't be surprised if he gets this from the sideline. So Byron Bay, they know that they need to get a bit of a buffer zone early in this game. Yeah, Byron Bay can't be too comfortable with a 10-point lead. We know of what's course. happened over the past few weeks. So this is Patrice. He's got the length and he may have the accuracy. And he does, flags go up. It's gonna be now 10 points to nil here at Red Devil Park in Byron Bay. Yeah, yeah fantastic kick, uh, 10 point buffer. But I think Byron, to keep their confidence, they just have to keep scoring tries. When they go off the boil for a bit, they're having a tough time maintaining a lead. So they're just gonna have to keep attacking, I, I believe. So Byron Bay's next contest is the, the Derby against Mullumbimby. They want to get revenge for the, from about a month ago at this very ground when they they had a very comfortable lead, sure, at 16 points to nil, and they, they lost it in the, the dying minutes by two points, and they know that they're going to need a big game here to take into next week. Mullumbimby, they, they got a, a close-ish win against Evans Head last night on their home patch, so that is Sean Hinton. Morris Brothers, they will have, that's the other thing to consider too. Morris Brothers will have a, 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 a two points with the bye next week. So I believe yeah, they have got the bye and they have got Moorlambar to follow at home in, in a fortnight's time. Yeah, Byron Bay Red Devils looking good here. Oh, so great, great defensive tackle coming out of the line and put the ball on. Now, sure, I don't know if that was played at, but we'll see what it's called there. Um, I don't think for me Morris Brothers played that one. So this should be, uh, I think, the fourth phase. That was taken by Gabe Belcher. Josh Gollum's called time off for something. We can't see we can't see it on the screen here. Morris it, Brothers Mar down in back yeah, play. Yeah, down in back play. So I think that's just a little bit of a knock. Yeah, the officials have been really great this game. Good to see. Do we have the officials' names? So Josh Gollum, the referee. And Josh Gollum. Yeah. 
So that is um, Brody Jones there, Shorey. So he was listed on our, our team sheets as um, number 14. So they, they've put him into the starting lineup in the centre. So that would be a costly loss for him. If um, I think he's clutching at his right shoulder there. Yeah, he'll walk this one out. So I trust you join the coverage wherever you may be watching. It's actually not too bad as far as temperature goes. We're about 18 degrees here at Byron Bay. As you probably would have seen on the graphics. Yes, 18 and, a half, 18 and a hook on the degrees front. It was probably, you could take 10 degrees off that a couple of days ago. We thought we we're going to have to be rugged up on jumpers here. But um, it, winter has certainly come on point at the very first weekend of the season. So this is Batiste, Lees. That's Crawford. Oh, that for me looked a little bit forward and it's going to be called as such. But it's good creative play going out to the wind, spreading it wide. Fight, they're finding gaps all over the place. If they can keep this up, they're looking strong here. Morris Brothers either going to need to shut down this, uh, shut down the attack, going wide and pinpoint their plays. They've, they've come out of the line a few times and diffused the backline plays. But Morris are going to have to get a bit more creative if they want to put some points on the board. As you can, it is ten points to nil, and we're. We're about uh, just nearly halfway through the first half here, so about 21 and a half minutes left to go in the first half of action. So Bradley's was keen to get the ball. He's always, he fought better of it, didn't want to give away a, a penalty. So this will be Slavin now, the player 20 metres inside their own half of field. That's taken up there by Blake O'Connor. Does well to get it 30 metres out on the second tackle. They bring it in on the centre of field now. They know where that's probably working well from in the forwards there, Shory and Morris Brothers. That was a nice run there by Jacob Rose into the hands of Slavin. See, Morris Brothers got a really nice backline set here to the right. Let's see if they use it or not. And that's where they're going there, Shory. It's getting in, into their, through the hands. Cut out pass into to Josh Patton. If points are going to come, it's going to come from him. He's one of the, the team's top try scorers. That's fine. Does well to bring it inside field. See, Morris Brothers have got numbers on the right here. If they can get it out wide... They've got a chance. That's Paul O'Neill, kicks it across the carpet, and it's going to be just a tad too deep. So the Bay are going to now have it 20 metres out from their own line. Yeah, not an optimal kick, a finish for the set of six. I'd like to see them using their back line more as they keep on harping on about. But here we go, Bay from 20 out. Big run from Montgomery. He's a workhorse. Absolutely, yeah, he's probably... probably for me, probably the, the biggest meter reader, if not for Byron Bay, well, one of the top five, you'd have to say, say for the, the competition, being a big influence at either setting up tries or getting him in a position that could score for the Byron Bay Red Devils. So, so this will be Batiste, 40 meters, right on smack bang on the 40 meter line. And what's been called here, so you can't see it, Josh Gollum's called time for a penalty against Marist, perhaps um, offside. So there's Paul O'Neill, the captain. So, yeah, that, that's probably the only logical one there is if he was caught for offside. So, yeah, there's, I can, that's unfortunate there for Morris Brothers. Um, you can't see it here, but Brody Jones has just come off and that's that shoulder, which is very unfortunate for the lad. And he's going to be now replaced by, I think that's going to be Isaiah Brown. No, that'll be Lesio Staveman. Yeah, okay, yep. That, yeah, so Lesio Staveman, that's not on my team sheet. There are a lot of late changes to these team sheets. If you could see them, it's a bunch of <laughs> crossed out names and names <laughs> put in, so it's a bit tricky calling the names. And we're doing it all about within five minutes of coming on air. So, so Byron uh, have got a really strong back line set up here. Okay, so let's see what can do, what can happen here. Could Byron Bay, for me, they're going to make the most of these opportunities. Despite being 10 points up, 10 points to nil, they're looking to get it into the hands. That is... Matt Gallagher, and just as I say that, maybe a little bit of a commentary curse there, sure. He's just knocked that on. Yeah, it's, it's almost too easy. Not much pressure on him. He's just, they've lost it. The third time that's happened, I reckon they could be double the points here if they would got those, uh, you know, if they've held onto the pill a bit more. Sure, I may mention last week, Byron Bay picking up, um, they had about four ex Ballon players when they played Ballon last week. It's also worth mentioning, with the likes of Mitchell Krause coming in last season, the Bay have also picked up uh, some prodigal sons from the, the likes of the Kennedy brothers, for all, about three of them. Aiden Kennedy, Kyle Kennedy, and I'm trying to get who the other one is, uh, Lachlan Kennedy. It's almost Byron Bay's version of having um, the Rabbitohs fall. <laughs> who are those blokes, the brothers there? Uh, the Burgess boys. The Burgess boys. Yeah. There's three of them, isn't there, or four? Uh, yeah, about that, but they, they all played for the one club before coming over from the UK. So, um, so... Yeah, it's, let's just see what comes out of this one. So Byron really testing their muscle in defence. 
And the dumb well just keep inside 20. Bit of a team effort there in defence. This is going to be Slaven. Let's see if he can get him out of trouble. Nice big hard run by the likes of Blake O'Connor. Yeah, good tackle there by Dylan Montgomery in the head gear, getting right under the, in the pit. So there's the Slaven. You can see how he's so dangerous in attack. There's his opposite number there, Andrew Batiste. Bringing him down to defence. This is fifth and last. They have done well to keep Morris inside their own half of field. That's going to go straight into the hands of, I think that's uh, Dan Gibson there, sure. I believe it's T Terrence Ferguson. Terrence Ferguson, five. yeah, the new, the new fella. Safe hands. He's oh, and he's, just, yeah, he's just got a bit of a cramp there. Or at least we only hope it's cramped there, sure. I think he's got it clutching at his right leg there. If it was a knee, you wouldn't be um, in this position. You'd be in the fetus position. <laughs> So there's been another uh, change there for the Byron Bay Red Devils there. I can't make out who the number is, Shorty. Uh, number change over that's here. Not, I think that's number that came on Gomery. Let's come on. Yeah, that is, in fact, came on Gomery. It's just come off. Um, yeah, Lachlan Kennedy has gone, gone on. Once we take this, we want to thank our sponsors once again, Ladbrokes, for sponsoring the live stream for you watching there on MGM Sports. And, of course, uh, sponsoring the NRRL competition. And you can see there, 10 points to Neil Byron Bay over the Morris Brothers Rams. So, as we resume, that was played off there by Crawford. I think that's Scott Stapleton there in the tackle there, sure. He's brought down. This will be now played by Batiste, just in outside of the 40. He's going to be helped there, brought down there by the likes of Slavin. And, and that's going to be Batiste. Does well get it on the 40, 35 metres out. It is a good battle of the hookers today with Batiste and his opposite number and Slavin head-to-head. Big wide Early pass. Kick. That is Dan Gibson. He does well to go right in, just does a little hit and spin. He's brought down there by the Paul O'Neill, the Morris Brothers captain. Yeah, 28 metres out here for Byron Bates. Good field position again, fifth and last. That was Lee from Dummy Half. That's uh, that's Ben Crawford sends that one. And uh, that should get into the hands of Aiden Haywood. And he does he does well to bet two or three players. He's going to look to beat Bradley's. He won't. Yeah, sensational kick. Stood right up in the in-goal area. Uh, bit of poor defence getting out of line. And, and oh, there we go. So I, I, think that, I think that's a, I think he's called there for, for back chat there, Shory. Josh Goldman, I think he's single back chat. So, so Byron Bay will have this one about 30 metres out from the, the line, from the Morris Brothers line. Good tap and run by Lachlan Kendi, number 16. Took initiative into his home hand. Yeah, it's a shame to see the back chat and stuff. It's really going to hurt Morris Brothers here. They want to ensure to defend well and if whoever's made that mistake back chatting want to back it up with strong defense here so this is batiste he's got a 20 meters out now from the morris brothers line that's a nice big hit up into the into benny crawford so 10 meters out and a couple of a couple of tackles up with the sleeves for byron bay this is batiste goes himself he's got kraus he has bradley's there in assistance but i don't I think he's unaware there but mitchell kraus yeah, Krause is dangerous with a bit of space. They they manage to get on him really quick if you let him get up to speed. Hard to tackle. So this is Batiste. Goes in the hands of Gallagher. Does well, Gallagher. So close to the line. Another one would be damaging now for the Morris Brothers. Rams coming into the latter portion of the first half. Batiste kicks across the carpet. Going to be too deep. Morris Brothers will have a 20-meter restart away from their own line. Yeah, I really like Matt Gallagher too. Um, strong runner. He doesn't look like a big, you know, second rower, but he runs really hard, really strong defence. And he, uh, he, play, he must play close to 80 minutes. He plays a long time, he's fit. Good strong forward pack, Byron have. So this will be played now by Jake Hoban. And that's Jacob Fortin there with the ball, I assure you. For me, he's, um, he normally gets a, on the on the pool a lot more than what I normally see him. And he's a very dangerous player with with the ball when he gets it. So I think for me, Shory, that they need to get the ball into the hands of Josh Patson and Jacob Fallant. Um, and they've got to really do it soon because Byron Bay have just are coming close to getting a third. And you, Mara's brothers, at very least, need to keep within arm's length going into the first half. Yeah, well, they're so, just playing simple footy here. It's a third or fourth tackle straight out of the middle. That's a really strong run there by Jacob Rose. 
Oh, it's, it's been stripped. So what's come out of this? One-on-one on one strip. Oh, that, that is... Uh, I think... Um, let's see what has been called. Josh Gone, I think, might have even seen an error out of this from... Maybe even from Byron Bay, sure. Let's see what... No, it's Matt Gallagher. What I can see, he's stripped it. But we'll so let's see, see what, see what the referee calls. He's, yeah, no, he's called a... I think he's called a scrum. So he might have actually lost it more as opposed to being stripped there, Shorey. So... Yep. Yeah, another mistake. Here we are. Morris Brothers have got to defend strong here. If they can keep Byron in their own half, they have a chance for a try. But, yeah, too many mistakes. But here we go. Scrum feed. So they're about 25 metres out The Byron Bay Red Devils. Nicely taken the tackle there by Matt Tickle. And so this will be played by Batiste. Does well to get inside 40. Well tackled there by... Uh, Jay Mahali there, sure. He's, um, he's, what, he was on another late addition for this squad for the Morris Brothers Rams. Batiste there goes himself, gets it 35 metres out on the third phase. Playing on now on the short side, that's going to be Benny Crawford. And he's brought down in the tackle there by Jay Coben there, Shorey. Yeah, they're able to gain a lot more ground than Morris Brothers are. It's a really strong forward pack fire and a So that's Kraus. Kraus goes himself, gets it in the hands there of Ben Malloy. And he's crunching the tackle there by Tri Murray. And this should be the fifth and last. This is now going to be taken up there by Batiste through the hands of Crawford. And that's going to be now Lachlan Kennedy. You want to get rid of this. He's he doesn't know it's the fifth, perhaps. Oh, he's lost oh, it out the no. back. So that's going to be now a restart now for the Morris Brothers Rams. Yeah, I don't think the ball was meant to go to him. It was a bit of a wayward pass, went over uh, the 5 8 head and straight to the big front row. He didn't have the kicking boots on him today. So I think that was lo oh, who was that there, Shorey? That thought that was, might have been Lockie Perrin. Could be very much Terrence version. Oh no, it's not. No, no, no. That was uh, that was Aiden Haywood. So that's going to be Matt Tickle. Gets it there, 30 meters, at about 10 inside field. This is Slaven. He's brought down there by Ben Malloy. Morris brothers need a really good kick here or a strong backline play to, to make an indent. So Fallen gets it into the hands of Patton. This is what the Morris Brothers Rams want. And as you can see there, it's Josh Patton into the hands. That I think is Tri Murray. And I've no, no he's been a clip called full pass. Oh, he oh, had a wry geez. smile on his face running for the try line. He thought he was home. But, and he's called 10 minutes. Who's he giving that to there, Shuri? He's, he's marched someone there for 10. I don't know what's happened out of that. Back chat, perhaps. Might have been back chat. Um, they've been penalised a couple of times already for that. He'd really, I mean, he's got to go and talk to his boys and say, it's all, you know, we'll you, get an, you we'll can't do this. We'll just, got to we'll just find out who that is, sure. Um, he's coming off the field now, so I don't know what he's called. So that, oh dear, that's uh, Josh Patson that's got off, Shorey. It's cost him, what, two penalties and someone in the bin for 10 minutes. Josh, so Josh Patson for me, probably the, probably the attacking player for the Maris Brothers Rams has been marched for 10. And when they need more points, like when they in the need of points, he needs to be out there. Yeah, Backshot's one of the easiest penalties not to give away, perhaps, as well. And it's easy sitting up here. It's pretty emotional out there, but you've got to control these things. So this has been Abertis now, 40 metres out from their own line. Nice a little... He does well, but he's going to be brought down there. Does well to get inside now. The Morris Brothers half the field, 45 metres out now. So this would be Batiste playing the short side in the Crawford. That, for me, looked probably line ball at best. All right. You could have been given a case for four pass. That's going to be Kraus. He wants another one against his ex-club. Scored two here last year. So this is fifth and last. Batiste. Kick goes across field. There's going to be Jacob Fawn's going to have to do well to catch this one. It's going to beat him completely. But they'll get the next best result. 20 meter restart. I think that bounced in goal. It's still 20 it did, yes, restart. yeah. So it'll be 20 meter restart. <laughs> he didn't want to, it didn't attempt to catch that. Yeah, you'd be forgiven for not like, <laughs> just letting that one go. That? that that went right up. It got some got a bit of snow on that one there. Sorry, just to put it mildly. So this would be Slaven now to play at 30 meters out from their own line. Yeah, nice run there by. I believe that is to be Stav Stavon. Is that was that Calicio Stavon? Stavman. So this is. So for me, this is what I think it's more opposed than the two tries that the the Red Devils have scored there, Shorey. It's it's more to, to do with Byron's defence. I've really got that right compared to seven days ago. But then again, they, they did look just as promising last week against Balna. So 
It matters for very little unless they... I mean, let's see what Byron Bay can come in the second half. Like, what they can't do is let a try in so quickly and let one in within the dying minutes because that's... I think it's momentum for me, sure, because that's what I've thought for me is what the just as much got Good undone. momentum here. So this is not this is a nice run that gets it into the oh I don't know if it, that's gonna that's headed it right back over the Morris Brothers Rams. So let's see what's so what's it's, happened here. This could be now eleven on thirteen, potentially Shorey. Let's see what comes out of this. Paul O'Neill's there, the captain. Couldn't quite get the penalty, anyone in the box. Is that an offside tackle? Morris Brothers can ill afford to be eleven on thirteen at this point in the game. Being ten points down. I think Josh Gollan is basically just going to tell, tell, tell the boys to keep cool, let him referee the game. And you can see Paul O'Neill, he, like he, you know, as, as you mentioned about a few minutes there, Shore, you can tell, you can just lose the look on Paul O'Neill's face. He's, he knows his team are behind there and they, he's looking frustrated. But So Batiste here, I heard someone in the crowd there say, yeah, take the two. And he's been known to take the two points when there's some kicking range. But nevertheless, they know that Byron needs to, Byron for me, as I said, Troy, they need the momentum. This is Batiste. They do. Two points might have been good there, but they know what's right. No, that was Crawford. Crawford kind of stopped in his own tracks there. So this is Batiste playing the short side into, I think that's one of the Kennedy brothers there, Troy. Kyle Kennedy, big number eight. Yeah. Oh, oh no, 16, don't. sorry. Lock on Kennedy. So this is going to be Lees looking for a double. He goes himself, Lees. He's brought down there by Paul O'Neill. Nicely take, taking the tackle there, Paul O'Neill. Yeah, Lees is playing as one of the blokes in the box set earlier. He's going to be a bit of a running halfback today, and it's proven That's true. Krause brings it into Dan Gibson. Has five tries in this campaign. Wanted to add to his tally thus far, but I think he's just absolutely spilt that Dan Gibson. So Morris Brothers will have a 10-meter scrum feed away from their own line. Yeah, Byron do need that momentum. They're only 10 points ahead. They've had a lot of try-scoring opportunities here that have gone to waste. They need one or two more to keep that momentum rolling to not suffer a loss like they've had in the past couple of weeks. And Morris Brothers, and they, they don't necessarily have to get this margin back. We've been, well, what have we got now? Six and a half minutes left to go till half time. They, if they've done their study, they would know that Byron have absolutely clocked off and put the cue in the rack at the second half. And a lot of it, as I mentioned, is to do with momentum. And if they can just get one try here and not concede any in the last five minutes, I reckon Morris Brothers would be going to happier in the sheds despite being mate, potentially four or six points down there, Shorey. Yeah, ten point. Uh, he's just dropped the pill there. That's not going to help matters there for the Morris Brothers. Jacob Wolf Byron. Rose, just, oh no, number 17, Cassio Staveman dropped the pill. So this is taken up by Gallagher. And in turn, Shorey, Byron Bay Red Devils, they know at 30 with the extra man on the field, they know they need to get some points before they make it back into a level pe pegging a look, especially with that person being Josh Patson. So this will be played by Matt Gulliger from dummy half. Through the hands to Lees. Crawford, that's Krause. Into the, that's Stapleton. Little hit and spin by Stapleton. They're about seven, eight minute meters out from the Morris Brothers line. Krause goes himself. And there's about, though the Morris Brothers were basically waiting for it. You, you could say that he's, to, to put it fairly, he's probably probably the targeted player out there, Mitchell Krause. Although they're waiting for him. And that is certainly not going to help matters there for the Red Devils. Their hand is right back over to the, the Rams. Yeah, drop ball there by Dil, uh, Lachlan Kennedy. So, actually, hang on. So, no. Uh, well, it would have been a double knock on. I think I saw Josh go on there, signal. So, we're going to just send five minutes inside. Sorry, five minutes to go of the first half. Ten points to nil if you just joined us here at Red Devil Park in Byron Bay. Byron Bay scoring a couple of early tries. You can see there on the Ladbroke scoreboard. Maris Brothers, they should know that like Byron Bay, they're going to have to do well the second half, even at, despite being at 10-0. This is Murray playing it from dummy half. Does well, but he's just unfortunately met the, into the, the likes. I think that's Ben Malloy there, Shorey. Yeah, the man handled. Uh, but Byron have had way better field position, especially later in this half. So, so you probably make, make a case of Byron Bay being in 10 points up. You'd think that they should be up a bit further with the amount of Amount of ball possession. Three, three tries go begging. Just dropped it. Of course. So in all fairness, though, the Brad Lees, he didn't redeem that like, first one in the first minute of the game. So so that was uh, Jake Hoban. Plays it now. 45 metres out. Kick goes up. 
And that's going. They might even get this one back. The bounce may even going to be favorable. But oh, oh, absolutely crunched. Paul O'Neill that just bounced off the Red Devils player to the approval of the crowd here in front of us in the commentary box. So yeah, Paul O'Neill bounced straight back up and he's making a tackle now. Yeah, he's a tough, he's a tough cookie there, Paul O'Neill. There's every reason why he's the captain. He's back at, he's back in the trenches for his team, and I think they've even got this one back. Yeah, Morris look good here. They put, they want to rush towards this uh, scrum feed and get the ball playing. They sent a bit of momentum here. Yeah, Paul O'Neill will just dust himself off and get himself back into the contest. I've only got five people in the scrum here. I know they got, they got six. Sorry. Three minutes to go left here in the first half of action. Gets it into that's uh, Jacob Fallen. That's Try Murray. He knows how to get points. Try Murray. He's he's got he's got the pace. And this is going to potentially be the first point for the Morris brothers. And Capri, as I mentioned, for the course of the 5-10 minutes, a costly one. Byron Bay have once again conceded a try in the dying minutes of the first half. And Shorey, let's see what happens in the second half, because that could really be a game changer. Yeah, they got that ball out quick out to the wing. Try Murray, he's, he's really quick. And you could see he, he just... Uh, got the try before disallowed due to a forward pass but he still had the same smile on his face running towards the try line he likes scoring those tries he looks quick i'm sure he scored quite a few i'm seeing the likes of mick foster and todd carney down the bench there shorey they would not like that one single bit going into the sheds time and time again they have been in front at every portion of the game or in this case last week level with ballina and within the couple of minutes they say momentum is key in these contests and at 10, 10 to 4 potentially 10 to 6 it's um, game on. Yeah, anyway, it makes it good for the crowd, makes it good for our, the people watching online. So if you're online, you're, having, you're enjoying the game, share it with your friends. Uh, everyone can be tuning in, watch the second half of this game. We've got a thrilling uh, second half coming. Oh, <laughs> he's testing the wind. There's not much wind about Sorry, it. Sorry, about 9, 9 kilometre winds here in Byron Bay. And um, you can see that way even less than that now, three and a half. So that went down by about 15 kilometres. So west south westerly breeze. I think it might have been the temperature 19. There's not been much wind all day. So this will be slaving to, to send this one over. About 15 in from the right-hand touch line, 20 metres out. So you can hear a pin drop here at Red Devil Park. The loyal supporters here in Donny's Hill have absolutely gone quiet. Not now, they haven't. And great kick there by Mitch Slavin. They had the extras, 10 points to six. Byron Bay, Red Devils over the Morris Brothers Rams here at Red Devil Park in Byron Bay. Try Murray, that was his third try for the campaign. Scoring tries against the Coogeon Hornets and Evans Head Bombers. And he was one of those graduate from the, in, the once invincible. Oh, what's happened here? Batista's taking the short kickoff. Does what? So th they must know that they, they, they need to be the ones that score the last try of the first half, Shorey, because they know that the moment is important. You would not ever see that. You see that at the last few minutes of a game, but well, nevertheless, they've done well to get the ball back. Yeah, it's good. Shows a lot of confidence. I don't think he communicated to too many players, just a couple of key players surrounding the kickoff, and something's happened here. Brian Josh Gollins just going to tell him to replay that. they will be on the second or third tackle. Batiste, oh, incorrect play. Oh, hang on. No, he it on no. In the play no, 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 no. He's just telling him to replay it. Take your time. Batiste. Oh, no, nicely put pass out of Batiste. Oh, that was a... No, let's... Oh, that was probably line ball, maybe. Oh. Ball. And this is Stapleton in the corner. And the short kickoff from Batiste about a minute or two earlier. He potentially paid dividends. And now Byron Bay knew how important it was to get the points going into halftime. And that should be halftime. 14-6. A, a lot of smiles walking off the bench here towards Cook. He's got a big smile on his face. He's happy. Yeah, that was really important by Byron Bay to shift I the momentum. Sure, I thought there might have been a case of forward pass on our monitors here. Never, no. never, no. Nevertheless, it was. It's been given the benefit of the doubt, and Byron Bay are, are now taking the advantage. And frankly, Shorey, they needed to. They did. They took it, and uh, yeah, some clever play. Big, confident floating pass out to the winger on the left hand side, and he was getting ta about to get tackled over the sideline, but he's thrown it back in to his teammate and put it right over the right over the try line where it belongs. Scott Stapleton, and that is actually his second try of this year's campaign. Scoring one against the Mwollomba Mustangs a couple of weeks previous. 
Shorey. Yeah, Shorey. I, I said time and time again, I was like broken record in the first half, I was in this half of action. I think Byron Bay, I think you could see Todd Carney now on his birthday, I reckon he's going to be a little bit more calmer than going in. Carrying the waters, you can see he's still carrying that rib injury, he's a bit tender walking around. He toughed it out for a few, the past three games, playing with an injury, which a lot of credit to him. Well kicked there by Batiste, but it's just not going to come quite out of the accuracy. So that is the first half of the books here at Red Devil Park in Byron Bay. Byron Bay are now going to go in with a momentum off the hat. cheeky little kick by Batiste. Uh, Who did you like in the first half there, Shorey? The Bay looked good. They looked stronger. They had the field position. Morris Brothers got their try off uh, a line break out the side and just a bit too much space. But Byron Bay have had the field position. They've had the momentum for most of the game. If they can keep it up, they're strong. But they've just got to they've got to keep the momentum. They've come out in the second half from the past few games and lost that momentum and the will to keep on scoring tries and that's what's hurt them. Byron Bay are gonna need a, a change of play despite you can see there being in front here at Red Devil Park. They've all been the front runners in forty minutes, but they need a replicate effort to take the two points here today. And what is a crossroads game to see who is gonna still be in contention for the top five at the halfway point of the two thousand and nine campaign. Half time here at Red Devil Park. It is the Byron Bay Red Devils 14 to the Morris Brothers Rams 6. We will be back with you in about 5 10 minutes for the second half of action. Uh, just a reminder, all the patrons, we do have plenty of hot food up there in the canteen. So if you want something to eat and a cold drink, just go up to the canteen in the clubhouse. Uh, just acknowledge our sponsors Ben Weber Construction, Byron Bay Building Materials, Simo's Auto uh, Automotives, the Park Hotel. Limited Access Excavations and Tripper Deal. Finally, the uh, group sponsor, Rad Folks. Dwayne Neville and Michael Shaw returning back here at Red Devil Park in the lead up of the second half of action. As you can see there, Byron Bay Red Devils, 14 points to six. As you can see there, on the Labrooks scoreboard, proudly sponsored by Labrooks. Uh, head over and download the app today or head over to labrooks.com.au for all your betting information. Shory, so with the Byron Bay Red Devils, uh, when they considered that first try, you fought for all money that Morris Brothers would probably have their tails up going into the second half, but it's actually a, a nice little play there by Batiste to get it with, it with that little short kickoff has sent it back the other way. So what do Morris Brothers really need to do to, to, um, to, to take some potential authority out of this game? Oh, well, I think they're sitting pretty strong. They're just a little bit of momentum taken out of their sails with the late-minute try before the halftime whistle. But they're just going to keep playing the game they were playing before. When they spread it to the wings, they were getting they were getting a uh, field position and they scored a couple scored the try. So they're going to keep doing that. They're using their forwards, but they're not making too much damage with their forward pack up the centre of the field. So if they can get it spread it out to their quick men in the sides, they're, they're in it with a chance to win. So the Morris Brothers Rams will be running left to right on your screen. That's where we get away on the second half of action. And that's going to be taken up there by Ben Malloy. He's been going to be brought down there by Matt Tickle. Matt Tickle. So Byron Bay, if they're to get themselves into six, potentially six position, they'll need to do something which they haven't done in the second half for a matter of, matter of weeks now and to take authority in the second half. So that's going to be taken up by Matt Gallagher. Yeah, this is really where Byron Bay have got to show their medal. They've lost the past four matches, I believe, in the second half, going into the second half with the lead. So it's going to be a really big confidence booster if they can get some points on here and uh, win this second half. So Batiste plays that into the short side. That's Dan Gibson. And brings that inside field. Bet puts it in the hands of Ben Crawford. Back into the hands now of Dalton Shaw. He's brought down there. So Josh Patson has been a, is now back from his 10-minute sin bin. Kick goes up there by Ben Crawford. And, oh, back in, it goes into the hands of Scott Stapleton. I think, no, so that was um, Terence Ferguson. And let's see what comes out of this. This will be Byron Six again, knock back. Uh, I know he's called that one back for Morris Brothers there, Shorey. Okay, perhaps a double knock on. Yeah, they nearly got rid of that there. And uh, it flick out of the back to Morris play the ball on their 21-meter line. See, that's another strong performance by the Byron Bay's forward to get them this deep uh, into Mara's field position. And shows how important the Byron Bay uh, forward pack is. When you've got the big guys like Dylan Montgomery leading the charge, it really motivates the rest of the pack and the whole squad to 
see them putting their body on the line so hard, being so aggressive, making ground, and makes it lifts the rest of the team. So this is going to be Slaven. It gets it into the hands of Fallant. Brought down in the tackle there, but at 45 metres out. This is Slaven. Gets into the hands of Paul O'Neill. There for uh, 35 metres out. Fallen again. And the kicker goes across. There's Josh Patson looking for it, but he's going to be taken. Nicely read it there in the uh, defence by Terence Ferguson there, Shorey. Yeah, beautiful hands. He's, he's had safe hands all match, and he's a good, strong player. I'm looking forward to watching him play the rest of the season. Slaven does well in defence there. They're about 35 metres out from... The Byron Bay line. Byron going to be looking for back-to-back -back tries. It's pretty much almost imperative, despite being eight points up. Yeah, just, just a floater in front of um, Dalton Shaw there. He thought the ball was going past him, but I think it was aimed for him. So I think that's, uh, let's see the Ben Malloy or Dylan Montgomery there. Dylan, uh, sorry. Uh, Dylan Montgomery yeah, Dylan, yeah. again. Yeah, so he's come back on for fresh after having uh, the first half off. Oh, nicely taken in the tackle there by... Paul O'Neill, he's had a real captain's effort today there, Paul O'Neill. This is Batiste playing on the short side. And that's going to be, that's, I think that's Dan Gibson. And this will be fifth and last. This is going to be sent up across the field. And that's well taken there in attack. That is going to be Scott Stableton. He's keen to get a double, but he's going to be brought down just short, I think, for me. And he is, and that is there right about maybe two or three metres out from the Morris Brothers line there, Shorey. Yeah, it's really encouraging for Byron Bay to have Todd Carney out and still have a really good kicking game. A lot of their opportunities that come off the boot of, who do we have kicking? Is it Crawford? Kicking? Yeah, Benny Crawford. Benny Crawford kicking today. He's had a really good game on the boot. So this is Slaven now to play it. And he does well to beat about five, six players. Batiste had, brings him down. Yeah, it's David, and he's been, uh, he's been Morris Brothers' strongest forward today. Really hard to tackle him at a lot of line busts. And, and had a lot of hit-ups. So this is Slaven now, 20 metres out now from from the Morris Brothers line. And he's back there in the tackle by Dylan Montgomery. Morris Brothers forward pack have uh, stepped it up a gear today. They, they seem to be making a bit more indents into the Byron Bay defence. Good round the legs tackle. And back. penalty conceded there by the Red Devils. It's not what they needed early in the second half. Yeah, I think Benny Crawford uh, put a late hit on a Morris Brothers passer. So this will be now a fresh set of six. Going to be potentially within 540 of the Byron Bay Red Devils half a field. And just to make things even a bit more interesting there, Shorey, we're seeing some fresh grey clouds. You can probably see it there on, on your screen. And if there's some rain that comes, which is very possible the way it's been this weekend, and it could really open this game right up. This, here here so we are, Morris 20 out. Good start. Oh, nice barraging run. Does well You get it on the 10 metre line. This will be Slaven to play it. He's got the options there with Patson and Fallant. Nice. Casilio Stafman, yep. So Strong run again. Jacob, and he's met there in defence by Dylan Montgomery. So this will be Slaven. Now to play from dumb, dummy half. Gets it in the hands. That's Paul O'Neill. Fallant. And, oh, he's crunched down there about eight metres short. This will now be Paul O'Neill on the short side. This is going to be Slaven. It's always dangerous from the attacking position there, Slaven. This is fifth and last. Paul O'Neill from dummy half. And, oh, so close. Byron Redwell in defence. It's so far so good in the second half of the Devils. Yeah, great round the, athlete, round the ankles. Try saving tackle by Matt Gallagher. He's putting in a very good match today. Krause, Mitch Krause to play the ball. Yeah, so the intensity is really starting to pick up here, both on and off the field here, Shorey. This is where Morris Brothers haven't spent too much of the game, right down in Byron Bay's 10. Uh, Krause. So that's Krause. And he'd have to be probably the targeted player out there today. He's really gotten out of trouble there. Batiste plays it into the hands of Montgomery. Montgomery goes himself. He's got chasers, though. Does well to get it about 35 metres out from the Byron Bay line. Sensational. This, so this is now going to be played by Brad Lees. Batiste, Crawford, he's caught there about, oh, there's going to need personnel there from the Morris Brothers to bring him down. 25 metres out now from the Morris Brothers line. Batiste, forward about twice, going short side. And he's, he's had to it. run it himself, no players there wanted it. So this is now going to be fifth and last. Gets in the hands of Brad Lee's kick goes up. And that's going to be caught there by Ferguson. 
Stapleton crouches there or wanting it. He wants to get one against his former team. So now Maris Brothers now will have it deep inside their own half. Gonna be brought there in the tackle by Stapleton and as well as Bradley's. And there Bradley's is always looking impressive in defense. Picking up with picking up being in the position normally reserved for Todd Carney, who has got the coaching duties today. So sorry. Sorry, sure. Maris Brothers is gonna take their third interchange. So this is Oh, nicely taken there. Yes, yeah, for me, it's, it's gone up another level now for the Red Devils in defence. And they've done well to keep Morris Brothers inside their own half of field. This is Slaven. Sends that one going straight into the hands of, I believe that's Terence Ferguson. Yes, yeah, steady hands all day. Another great take. So they've done well to, to keep him there 30 metres out. So this is Crawford. Into the hands now of Gabe Belcher playing out of position. 40 metres out now from the Byron Bay line. This will be Batiste. Gets it into the hands. That is, uh, that's Dalton Shaw there, Shorey. He, he's just come onto, onto the field. This is now going to be Batiste. Brad Lees. And oh, he's met there by, well in defence out by Paul O'Neill. 40 metres out. And Batiste goes himself. Oh, goes again against Paul O'Neill. Fifth and last. And we're about 30, 31 and a half minutes left in the game. Kick goes up. It's going to be... Oh, just hit the chest there of, I think that should be Jacob Fallant. Sorry, yeah, that is Jacob Fallant. Does well to get it about 50 or 20 metres out from their own line. This is going to be taken up now by Aiden Haywood. And they're about, what, 20, 25 out on the second phase. This will be now slaving the play it. And I think, the, I think the, the mood of the game is just now calmed down a bit, Shory, after the initial 10 minutes. And that's going to... So why don't I just say that? That's given Byron Bay have given away the penalty. Yeah, it was a barnstorming run by Morris Brothers, big number sixteen, Chris King there, and good kick. He's gained about 10, 10 12 meters off the kick for touch. So Morris Brothers just inside Byron Bay's half. So Paul, sorry, Paul O'Neill now to play play it into the hands. I think that's Lockie Perrin there, Shorey, and. Um, yeah, they really need to get some of their, their representative personnel with the likes of Jacob Fallon and Josh Patson, who, who have played those big games, for big rep, rep footy games for the Northern Rivers Titans. But you can see their slave, and he just does what he needs to do and get themselves in position. Paul O'Neill's also been probably one of the impressive players for me, putting a real captain's effort for the, for the Rams. But nevertheless, it's still, it's still behind the eight ball. 14 to 6 if you just joined us. And this is going into the hands now of Jake Hoban. As you can see there on the Labrook scoreboard, 14 to six for Byron Bay Red Devils. And you'd think, sure, even despite the fact that it's, it's eight points, it's not quite getting into next try wins territory, but Byron Bay, they really need to keep well in defense. And when you've got the likes, you can see them on the screen there, Joshua Patson with the ball. He normally, he normally, you give him a space like that, he normally feeds it through. And that's a nice kick there by Fallant. And taken there by, I think that's uh, Gallagher. Matty Gallagher. Yeah, Byron Bay's defence looks really strong. They look organised. They look very healthy, fit, and they're, they're working together. It's pretty hard to get through. Uh, the backline plays, they're, not, they're numbering up. There's no holes anywhere. And that, I think that's going to be that's gonna help them if they want to win this. It is only eight points in it, but I've got a feeling there's another two or three guys might come this game. Great take on right on the sideline, tiptoeing along the sideline. And he's quick, he wants it. So he's going to be met in the tackle. I think that's Brad Lees there, Shorey. Well, he's, I think for me that they, they've been looking for the likes of Brad Lees to not only just step up and attack, but defence as well, Shorey, in the halves. And so far he's done his job. Yeah, he has, especially when you, you, your halves can run around at this time of day, put some big hits on people. It, it'll inspire the rest of the team to, to lift and keep strong in defence. So this is going to be Slaven. Goes himself. They're just on the halfway line. Yeah, defense is strong. Hard to penetrate. Oh. So the lights have just come onto um, here at Red Devil Park, Shory. So being a bit of um, wet, overcast weather here today and this weekend. Kick goes up. And it should be collected. There and it is. And that, I think that's Gabe Belcher there, Shory. Does well. Yeah, it shows a lot. 
Morris Brothers were only able to get 10 metres into Byron Bay's half. So Byron Bay can keep this defence up, keep attacking strongly. They should hopefully break their second half curse this match. Trust you join the coverage wherever you may be watching. Apologies if the streams do cut a little bit in and out. It's um, it's um, might have a bit to do with the weather and the fact that Byron Bay, um, it's uh, to do with maybe you know the the wireless connections or so. But nevertheless, um, hopefully it's coming well on your end and you're enjoying the coverage wherever you may be watching. So um, that's a penalty given there by the Morris Brothers Rams, and this could be. A, a, Potential gift here for the Byron Bay Red Devils, Shory, with about well, a set of six in tow and 20 metres, well, potentially could even be now 10 metres out from the Morris Brothers line. Yeah, Patisse and the Byron Bay Red Devils, they haven't chosen to kick when they've had the opportunity here to kick for two points, so they're confident of scoring four or six points with a try. So with 10 metres out, this will be Montgomery to play for, and the first tackle. This is going into the hands of uh, Benny Crawford. Goes himself. Valiant effort there by Benny Crawford. So Batiste, he's in good position to go himself. That's what he does. He's gonna. He's so close. Doesn't and get much he's just closer held than up. That. I kind of sense it there. Sure, he might have gone for that move. In this case, they're not paying off for him. So, sorry, this is going in the hands of Crawford. Lees, Kraus, Kraus goes himself. He, but he's met there by the likes of um, Blake O'Connor. Oh, that was oh, a little hint of a knock-on for me, Shory, I think. But, oh, what's come out of all this? Batiste, they think they've scored a try here. I think that was a trick play by Byron. Um, it was a fake so dummy Andrew heart. Batiste might have just scored himself a try. That's just come out of nowhere. And he's been, he's been playing some little cheeky plays. We, when I refer back to that first half with the kick, and now he's just got a, potentially a try out of nowhere to extend this lead for the Byron Bay Red Devils. Thus now making the score 18-6. Yeah, that might have been a little trick set play there. One person pretends to play, play the ball and, and they run over it and play it to the left instead of the right and it's confused the Morris Brothers defence and they've found a hole and scored a try. So this is what Byron Bay need. This is what they've needed the past couple of uh, rounds. They're scoring tries early in the second half. Heads are held high. Defence looks strong. Morris Brothers, if they want to stay in this, they're going to need to score next, I'd say. Sure, I've been told on Greta for you. It's actually called the mouse trap play. It's an old play. I, I think it's I think it's been handed down by the, the Batiste generations there. So, um, and we saw it all here on the MGM Sports live stream here. Eighteen to six. Get Batiste should be able to send this over to extend it, to get the extra two points off his own try just to make it twenty to six. Remember the mouse play uh, mouse trap play being popular back in juniors. It was a good little <laughs> trick. Did you try that once or twice in your junior days there, Shuri? I was never playing hooker. I was, I was just out the front running hard. But, uh, yes, I know the likes of Adam Johnson, Liam Jones and the boys did for Byron Bay back in the day. Kick goes over. 20 points to six now. Byron Bay Red Devils over the Morris Brothers Rams here at Byron Bay. And as you could... With it. So this has now been definitely a change of mood for the Byron Bay Red Devils. And you'd think, like, Todd Carney at halftime telling them that basically it's not just his game, but the season's on the line for him at the halfway mark. Well, they definitely, uh, the coaching staff, Cookie, Carney and Foster, they look a bit more relaxed on the sidelines now, smiles on their face. They had their heads, you know, their chins in their hands before, but now a few smiles. Yeah, they, they look a bit more confident now and they really need this win. So as the kick goes up, so that is, that I think, so that is um, Andrew Batista's third try of the campaign, getting over the stripe, over the Tweed Coast Raiders and Mullumbimby. Terence Ferguson, is this his first game with the Bay? Uh, well, I think for, for A grade, I, I dare say. But, yeah, so the likes of... Um, so Andrew Batiste, of course, he was a prodigal son of the Ballina Seagulls for many, many years. He's also had a season for the Runaway Bay Seagulls as well. Re played a bit of rep footy for Northern Rivers in seasons 12, 13 and 14. Yeah, I really like uh, seeing Terence Ferguson here. I hope they can keep him going forward this season. He's got a good set of safe hands. He looks quick. He's comfortable running the ball. And for me, Shory, you've got to pay like homage to the... I was talking to a couple of couple of um, uh, Byron Bay personnel who were involved with the juniors, and they're, they're, I think they're in the top four. They're juniors from under 14s up to 16, so they've got a... They've got some players to pick up from, you know, going on from the juniors and, of course, the under-18s. So they, they picked a really close win, the pre one of the prelim games coming into this one. 
and they're looking the goods as well. So yeah, um, it, it is important because with the NRRL point system for how many players, and it's kind of essentially their version of a salary cap. Uh, it's important to have a really strong junior squad coming through your club. Of course. Because juniors, I, I believe, don't quite need to be exempt, I think, from the world. I believe so. That's yeah. what I've heard. And the likes of big NRL players like Todd Carney, Jamie Lyon are going to cost you a lot of points. So this is now a penalty given by the, the Red Devil. So uh, they don't want to fall back in the old habits here in the latest stages. So we're about, oh, we're nearly in the, the final quarter of this one. 20 points to six, Byron Bay, Red Devils over the Maris Brothers Rams. So this is Patson. So you're thinking now next try has to be come from from the Rams there, Shory. Well, it's great field position for Marist here. They've got to make it. They've got to convert this into points. So this is Slavin. Oh, he's caught napping there, Slavin. He's normally so quick off the dummy half mark. But this time he's caught unawares. Yes, yeah, great to see. That. They don't see it too often anymore. Getting tackled right there by the first marker. Good strong play. So that's Lockie Perrin. It's going to be... So this is going to be Slavin. Play from dummy half. Oh, nice. Nice battering run but he's going to be brought down by the likes of Batiste I think that's also K Montgomery coming back onto the field Shory so this is Slavin playing on the short side yeah Blake O'Connor for Morris Brothers there. He's, he's been a really good player oh, oh and uh, it's just not gone their way at all today for the Morris Brothers Rams Shory but they were in a perfect position to get themselves back into this game and they're just going to hand this one back to the Red Devils with a 10 metre scrum feed well credit to Byron Bay Red Devils defence They've had big, run, big uh, the forward pack running up. You know, uh, who was that bloke? O'Connor belting in. They've managed to hold them up and and make the uh, make them concede a penalty. So this is good showing from Byron Bay. So this will now be played by Benny Crawford, ten metres out from the Byron Bay line. So trust you to join the coverage wave. You may be watching across MGM Sports. Bringing you all the cabbages, proudly sponsored by Labrokes and as well, proud sponsors of the NRRRL for season 2019. Head over to labrokes.com.au for all your betting action. Download the app today or gamble and gamble responsibly. This is Batiste, 30 metres out, gets it through the hands, does well in defence there. Jay Mahali. So this is, I think this is now Ben Crawford now for dummy half, goes himself. He's brought down the tackle by Josh Patson as well as Matt Tickle. So this will be now Kraus. Batiste kicks that inside 40. It's going to be, oh, goes over the head of Tri Murray. Great kick, Batiste. Nearly a 40 20, but not quite near the sidelines. So Hard and low over. Oh, Murray there. He wants to extend on that impressive try he scored earlier. Yeah, you don't want Tri Murray to get too much. You know, oh, and again, that's sensational from Jolton Shaw. Yeah. Uh, that's the second time he's, he's had a really quick move off the mark and made some great tackles. Very important when that Troy happens. Murray, he was, as I mentioned, sure, and I got cut off as I was um, about to mention. Troy Murray is, of course, a member of that, um, one of the un Invincibles from last year, from the, when I mentioned the reserve grade, who went two and a half seasons undefeated, which only just got broken a few weeks ago against Ballina. He scored, I think it was 13 tries in that campaign, and covering one of his games in the semi-finals last year he just put he just set the world alight how impressive he was in attack so he was and he's and he's showing very impressive in the attack an attack for the games I've seen from him this year and that, that's it speak of the devil that is Troy Murray gets in the hands of that he's gone into the hands of Josh Patson he's no stranger to the try line and he's got one unawares of Byron Bay defense and there's a sneaky grin there from Mitchell Krause he knows it too he is always, you'd always bank on him getting the points, and they really needed to. So now 20 points to 10. Byron Bay over the Morris Brothers Rams. Yeah, I think there's a few rice smiles. There. That was a pretty funky kick. Uh, probably not what it, how it was meant to hit it. It came up, it spinned, and uh, it went into the hands of Morris Brothers. They got away with that one. but yeah, You don't up. normally give Josh Patson much of a gap, Shory, because he will feed that through and line break and go points himself, as I've covered in many of his games at rep level and for the Morris Brothers Rams. But you give him that much gap, and then it's just, you know, thank you, good night, Irene. So this is now potentially making this back game on for the Morris Brothers Rams. And this will be Slave now to add the extras. Yeah, if he gets this, it'll be eight points down. Morris Brothers. Byron Bay, not too much chat going in the huddle, but they would really want to hold on to this lead. So Josh Patson, that is actually his fifth of the campaign, which now puts him as 
the top try leader for the Morris Brothers Rams at five. Other tries coming against the Coogeon Hornets. Evans have bombers. As one of the live streams that we, we showed you a couple of weeks ago, he scored one against Kyogle and Northern United last week. Scored 11 tries in the 2018 campaign, including doubles against Kyogle and Lower Clarence. And he was a representative of this uh, Northern Rivers Titans under 23 squad. So this will be now Mitch Slavin to bring this back into eight points. And we're about 18 minutes and change left in this one. As you can hear, Donnie's Hill goes up and they've just put him off there, Shorey, just to put it mildly. Mitch Slavin normally sends those over. And you, you could just say well played. You can see there, Mitch Slavin well played. So it's 20 points to 10, it remains. Yeah, that's let Byron Bay off the hook a little bit. So there's at least two more tries needed in this game for Myris Brothers to win it. So here we go. So there's yeah, still anybody's game, but that would have really helped Myris Brothers give them the confidence going into this last quarter of the match. So Follant gets that one in the hands. That is, uh, that is Blake O'Connor. And well taken in defence by Bradley. He's probably been... Oh, that Bradley just got put on his backside there, Shorey. But Bradley's is probably, uh, he's from, uh, definitely out of the backs. He's probably been the most busy in defence. Certainly yeah. he's had a really good game. Him and Batiste uh, kicking have been really uh, filled the hole that Todd Carney um, leaves there because he's got such a sensational boot on him. So, yeah, it's good to see them fill that gap. Shorey, I was mentioning in the fir first half of action, uh, a couple of ex um, Byron, or well, Morris players, sorry, Morris players playing for Byron Bay. Now one ex Byron players now out there, Chris King, you know, play, one of the members of um, from the Byron Bay Red Devils back from about maybe five or six seasons back uh, before heading to Morris Brothers via Northern United. Now that kick was nearly the exact same kick as he did last time and scored that try, so maybe it wasn't a funky kick, it was a kick he practices. Yeah, and it nearly came off again. So nicely taken inside 40 there. This is Batiste, gets in the hand of Kraus. Kraus is, Kraus is really desperate to get another one against his former club. He does well, get about 25 metres on the fly. Smack bang on the 40 metre line. Morris Brothers 40 line. This is Batiste, gets it in the hands. I think that's uh, that would be one of the Montgomery brothers. Kay Montgomery. This is Batiste. This is now Della Montgomery. Does well, get it about 20 metres out. About 15 inside field, fifth and last. Batiste brings it into the hands of, that's Crawford. Into, no, kick across the cover there from Brad Lees. And it's gonna be real red in there by fullback there from Jacob Follant. And so yeah, 20 points to 10, Shorey. I think, I wouldn't say 20 points is gonna be enough there for, for the Devils, but they've basically got a, um, the stats haven't really been on their side going into this one, as I said, um, they basically had to, um, what was that stat I was saying before? They, they've, can, they've, can, they've scored plenty of tries, but they've considered playing. Well, let's, let's put it like another way. I said, mentioned a couple of uh, the, the two wins that the Morris Brothers um, ran scored to get the win. They had to score 30. 30 is their magic number. And it's 20 off that mark. I don't see them getting 20 points today. So they get, someone's going to have to break history here today to get it done. It could happen. You know what we saw down in Kyogle? Lots yeah, of, of course. Can, people can score tries really quick in this game. Three and five is possible. Kyogle done it against Northern United. So, um, and I feel, I think that's still, um, that that live stream is still ticking viewers, Shory, for me. Yeah, great. It was a really good game. Here we go. We've got a penalty to Byron Bay. Uh, no, I um, believe it's a scrum feed to Byron Bay there, Shory. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, that was the other stat I was talking about. All the losses for... for but Byron Bay has came when they can see 23 or more points. So 24 is possible. So 14 points is more impossible than 20 at this point of the game. We're in the last quarter of the game here. So there's Kraus. And whilst he's, um, it's not as uh, few, not as hostile as it was um, the, the season opener last year, he's still being targeted. Probably more so because of the fact he's the captain today. Yeah, he's captaining well. He's... He's able to see those holes. I, I see a lot of friendly banter out there between the boys. I don't think it's anything too serious. Here we go. Patisse gets it in through the hands. Does well to get it 35 metres out. Laid off loading the back in the hands of Patisse. Gets in the hands of Lees. Gets it now into the hands. That is uh, Dan Gibson. Dan Gibson's going to be met in the tackle there by Jake Hoban and Paul O'Neill. 
It's going to be now 30, 30 out. Into the hands. That is, uh, that's Kian Laurie. One of the pickups there from Ballina, from the Ballina Seagulls from last season. Played a bit of Laurie Daly Cup for the Northern Rivers Titans, and he's just given that considered the error there, Kian Laurie. So this will be now uh, 25 minutes, sorry, 20, about fifth, sorry, 15 minutes scrum feed now for the, the Morris Brothers Rams. A yeah, good pace there from Kian Laurie, just unfortunately lost the ball. Morris Brothers are tackling really well, and they're, tackle, they're attacking the ball, making uh, ball control really critical. They, they're putting a lot of pressure on the ball, so easy for you to lose it. So ball, ball control for Byron Bay is key. See, see how far Morris Brothers can get out of their own 20 here. So that's Ben Crawford at the attempt of the tackle. He's brought down there by Sean Hinton. And that'll be 15 out. This will be the second phase of play. This is now Slavin. He's brought down there by Montgomery. Assisted there by Ben Crawford in defense. This is Paul O'Neill from dummy half. And he's met there once again by Sean Hinton. That's on the third phase of play. Just inside 40, Byron have really done well, which is what they've really needed to do, though, let's be frank, to really keep pl keep the play and keep the discipline, keep the Morris brothers inside their own half of field. I just think at this point, portion of the game last week against Ballina, they just uh, put the cue in the rack and it was just Ballina just had multiple opportunities deep inside Byron half and that was probably the difference compared to seven days previous. That, that was a good kick there. He found a bit of hot, uh, space in behind the Byron Bay line and had the right winger there, which I believe Brody Jones or Josh Patson, running onto it if he got it. He could have been away and scored a try. I think if Morris are to win, they will have to get a bit creative like that and, and pluck a few lucky tries out. So now Byron Bay Red Devils now 30 metres out from their own line. One more and you'd think at 11 and a half minutes to go here at Red Devil Park, you'd think... That would get their first win in multiple weeks. He's got no one to beat there except Troy Murray in the left. And it's going to be a foot race. That is Gabe Belcher. And that is right under the sticks. And you can hear at Donnie's Hill that have absolutely gone up. And at now 24 points to 10, this could almost be the thank you and good night now for the Morris Brothers Rams. And it was just a foot race at the end of the day, but Troy Murray uh, just... And I can see they can come at a consequence, Shory. They can't afford to lose too many more back line there. I think he's done his shoulder in the process. Yeah, it's popped out of joint. Oh, dear. He's just slid on it and he's popped it out. He's trying to pull it back in. Yeah, it, that it, that, that's a dislocated shoulder, Shory, by the looks of it. He knows it too. And you can see on the face there, he's in agony there, Gabe Belcher. What a shame. Really good run by Gabe Belcher. He had Tri Murray, which we know known Speedman coming up behind him, and he just he looked forward and lifted those knees and ran forward, and scored a great try run out of the post. And the Byron crowd went up. I think this is exactly what they've needed. It's been a tough few weeks for them. Batiste should slot this one over, but that's unfortunate for Gabe. I hope it doesn't look like the first time he's done it. When those shoulders pop out, it tends to happen more and more. So hopefully they can get it back in. He might be worth pulling up. I can see the so, coaching so staff that's, quite so that was his fourth. Side. That was his fourth try over the campaign this year. He's actually an ex-Mullumbimby under-18s under player, Shorey. So that could put him in doubt for when they have the return match against Mullumbimby next week. Yeah, he knows it too. He's um, He could... And Byron Bay Red Devils, their back line has been brought to the brink there, Shorey. As I said, there's no Todd Carney. They only just got Mitchell Krause back. And... You'd think now Gay Belcher, who's... Well, he's, he's responsible for four tries now, including that one, this campaign. And that's just going to... Might be proved costly going into this campaign. Well, let's just... We just hope that he hasn't done a, another dislocation there. As you mentioned, if you think that's a, indeed his second one. So this is Montgomery. So that's now 26 points to 10. Byron Bay over Morris Brothers. So they're, they're looking in good shape now to break this six-game losing streak against the Morris Brothers Rams. Byron Bay have just substituted Lachlan Kennedy back on. So nicely brought down the tackle there, 30 metres out. And you'd think one more now, and that would really put it to bed now for the Red Devils. Breaking what was... Well, this has been their first game at home for some time. They've been on the road for the last three. And have and they've lost, I think, the last four, Shory, I think, like, including that. And if you go back to the... Um, they haven't beat... Yeah, they haven't... Oh, that was attempted a 40-20. Sensational kick. It really nearly went out. Oh. Big save by 
Jacob Follen. He knew that was a 40-20 and he managed to tap it just back in. Really good play. Strong defense here by Byron Bay trying to push back in. They have put him back in the in goal area. So Shory, this will be the this will be the first lot of two points for the Byron Bay Red Devils since they got up in that in that really tough game against the Tweeko Seagulls, the defending champions at 18 points to 12. So they haven't seen a win since the month of April. Yeah, there's a different demeanour inside in the team on the field now in the second half. They know they've got they know they're in a really strong position to win this game and confidence and and momentum should get them over the line. And you and you really gotta pay I mean it's a it's a change of attitude in defence compared to to previous weeks as um you could probably, you know, refer to the game like we did out in, in Kai Ogle. Um, once again they just they they just needed to replicate what they did in the first half. They was not really have to change a whole lot. Of course the injuries have been a bit of a, an issue for the Devils. Uh, having to rely on some of their juniors to, to, to come back and, and do the job. Nevertheless, this will be now Andrew Batiste, now 10 metres out. And uh, couldn't they get 30 points on, on the Maris Brothers Rams here? Nice little hit and spin. Gets into the hands of Keon Laurie. He knows how to score tries from short distance. And he's going to be brought down there. Uh, I think that's... Uh, that was... Uh, was it Jai Maloney in the tackle? That's Lees. He's got Kraus there. Kraus is just always looking for work and attack. This is Batiste goes himself, and oh, he normally knows how to get him. I think he's gone over again, Andrew Batiste. And as cool as you like, that has just added the extras even further now for the Byron Bay Red Devils. They will two, take two points here on, on their home patch. 30 points to 10. Yeah, there's a lot of smiles on the Byron Bay players' faces. Haven't seen that for a few weeks. Good try, easy try for Batiste. He must have been, a, you know, what a good hooker he is. I'm sure he's got a lot of, a lot of tries like that in his time. So that is a, a double for today for Andrew Batiste, and he should have no troubles adding this, making it 32 points to 10. Sure, to be brutally honest with you, going into this game, you know, I wouldn't think, uh, seeing that like, he doesn't take too, waste too much time, 32 now, 32 points to 10. Uh, I thought this was going to be a much closer contest for me, um, especially after what I've been seeing from, from both teams. Like, Maros Brothers, for me, looked so impressive against... Um, Kai Ogle, despite not getting the job done out at Kai Ogle on a, on a frosty Saturday night, I, I thought there was going to be a much more tighter contest. But uh, I think Byron have just, uh, for the well, ever, ever since the early portion of the season, finally played 80 minutes of football. They have, and being at home has got to really help. It, it, you might not think it's that far to drive to half an hour down to Ballina or an hour out to Kai Ogle, but it makes a lot of difference. There's a lot of local support. I can see all their mates are here in the crowd. Everyone's cheering for them. Yeah, they feel good, and they need this win. And I and I think a lot of it might have had to do with the fact of that Andrew Batiste ten meter kick in the, in the last couple of minutes of the first half. It's, it's just um, momentum is key, and and I just felt that that was I I could rest assured, sure. Um, I'm not saying that Byron Bay would have um, be down by that this amount of points, but you'd think that um, they wouldn't be up 32 points to 10 without that. That kick in their step after that cheeky little play. So that's Kraus. Kraus goes himself. He's got one play to beat. And oh, he's passed that in. That's gone into the hands of Batiste. And that's going to be and Ben. Oh, what a try. Just out of nowhere again. So that's just inflicting more misery now for the Maris brothers. Remember, you can see there, Mitchell Kraus. He knows what that means to him. Didn't get the try, but he, he had a big hand in assisting. And um, as we can just see there. Oh, that was a fantastic try. All Byron Bay, backing, Byron Bay players backing up. Kraus got the break. He, he wanted to run to himself. Got a nice flick up on the inside to supporting players. Another pass. It's confidence, skill, speed, and fitness. They've worn, the, they've worn Morris down. Uh, yeah, that was a really good try. A lot of the other tries haven't been that pretty. But uh, this was. So, Shory, that was um, Kyle Kennedy, who was. So, it wasn't Mitchell Krause, but it was another ex Matt Morris Brothers player. So, you probably wouldn't see why he was support. Like, it's, it's a bit of a soccer terminology. We don't see it a lot in rugby, rugby league. So, when you're playing against your ex teammates, you don't really like. If you're playing from one side to the other, you don't really applaud and whatnot. Um, I can rest assured it would have been the other way if Mitchell Krause had have, um, actually got the points there. But nevertheless, Kyle Kennedy paying respect to his old. Club. He's, he played his junior footy for the Morris Brothers Rams, so he knows where he played his footy from. So he's he's being a nice, humble player there, Kyle Kennedy. As the kick goes up, 30 point, 38 points to 10 here at Red Devil Park in Byron Bay. Sensational kicking from Batiste. I think he's only missed one today, and 
made sure that every try has been worth that six points. So not long to go now. We're about five and a half minutes left here. Trust you're enjoying the coverage wherever you may be watching on MGM Sports. Proudly sponsored by Labrokes. So this is now Mitch Slavin. Uh, they'll, um, they'll just now, just, you know, playing for pride now. This is just really blown up. This is definitely a diff different, oh, I was just about to say. Um, well, you, you can now afford a bit of a, a, a sloppy first phase of play error there, but this is a different second half performance we see from Byron Bay. You can just see down on the sideline, Gabe Belcher does have his left shoulder heavily iced and strapped. Doesn't look to be in too much discomfort anymore, but he's got ice all over it. So, we'll just, I just got a message here um, from our other co-commentator, Nathan Cross. He said, King Krause is back. <laughs> <laughs> Trust you enjoying the coverage there, Crossy. I hope it's a, it's a bit cooler up in Corumba than it is here in Byron. So, uh, it's, well, I know from my time here at Red Devil Park over the years, Shory, that once, once you hit the 40 minute mark and the sun goes down, that the, the, the temperature just goes down tenfold. So this is Slavin. It's going to be taken up there by Jacob Rose. Sorry, that was um, taken up there by, that was Chris King there, Sh Shory. That's, that's fallen. So this is now going to be played by Slavin. That's, that's Chris King. So they just, they, they just kept well, just um, right in the corner there. This is Slavin. And, oh, it's just missed. That was intended for Paul O'Neill. And Stats gone in the hands of Jake Hoban. 10 metres out. Byron have just held him well, just right on the 10 metres. That's Slavin. Oh, that's Chris King. He's just going to fall just short there, Chris King. Byron Bay have been really good here on their own line defence. They haven't let any in through breaking through that line. And, yeah, it, credit to them in their line defence. So now we're now in the dying minutes. You'd think that there's probably Morris Brothers will probably have one last shot at it within about just over three minutes here to go. And this will be really encouraging for the Byron Bay Red Devils going into that. Looking for potential revenge against Mullumbimby where for me that was two points in the bank. Uh, you had 16 points to nil. So that's going to be Kraus. Takes a kick. Oh, but... It, yeah, it just didn't bit the bouncing go his way. It just ended up in the hands of Jacob Follant. And, um, yeah, so Mitchell Krause, probably not going to get a try today, but he's definitely been very influential in defense. So that's going to be Josh Patson looking for a double. What would just, to be fair, a consolation prize for the Maris Brothers Rams today. It would be really confidence boosting for Byron Bay if they do manage to keep Maris Brothers uh, trialless in this second half. And so they've got to defend their line here again, 15 metres out. So Slavin, that's King, Chris King. And, oh, he, he would love a try against his old club. He's, sc he's scored plenty over the years. <laughs> Kessio Staveman, he's been really tough. He's, he's a big boy, very hard to tackle, made a lot of yards. So that was Jacob and in defence. You don't want him had to take a tackle up against him. This is Slavin. Gets it through the hands. That's gone into the hands now of Matt Tickle. And that's going to find Murray. But that's, I think that's the last roll to dice there for the Morris Brothers Rams. And Byron will just run the clock at it's 38 points to 10. Still two minutes on the official clock. Double knock on there. How good is it to have, actually have a scoreboard to we have a clock? I mean, we've got the clock here, as you can see in the graphic. But that doesn't take in stoppages of play that we've had um, for, the, for the second half. So we... I mean, if you if, if you if you like um, the round ball game soccer, you could probably throw in. You can have an idea of um, injury time, but for the people that don't watch soccer at all, you, it's kind of a bit hard. But we're on the on the scoreboard. Well, it's almost like it's, rugby union too, isn't it? With the added time. Uh, yeah, that, that's true. Yeah, so we're about a minute and change left here. So Byron will just just run the, run the ball down. Kyle will play the 80th minute. Sorry, <laughs> Maris Brothers will play the 80th minute. Um, yeah, it's been a long day for both both clubs and us in the box here. So they're just going to kick it now. They're going to. So this will be ooh, potentially 40-20. This would just. It's not going to quite get there. Very close to a 40-20. He's been going for them all. Oh, so that is the, the exclamation boot. point for the Byron Bay Red Devils. Morris Brothers will not see this out with the ball, and by, and you'd think now we're in the dying seconds. They won't bother taking the kick. 
the ball boy's just been taken out by the water boy and oh, the hits of the day. We've seen everything here at Red Devil Park here, folks. So I think... No, 30 seconds on the clock. So Matt Slavin will send this up. They're going on the short kickoff. Why not? And this will be Gallagher, Gallagher to take it. They get the 40 points here. Sure, this would be like something else. So there's Kraus. Gets in the hands of Keon Laurie. And oh, no, they're going to... Oh, Kraus will kick this out. That should be it. You can see there in the top left-hand quarter, it's eight seconds ago. They won't bother pack, packing this down. This will be it. And we've just been told it is uh, our trusty leader, Captain Coach Todd Carney's birthday today. I mentioned that a few times in the call, Shory. So he can enjoy a happy birthday for the Captain Coach Todd Carney. And what a way to blow out the candles at 38 points to 10. The Byron Bay Red Devils have got themselves back on in winning terms. Great game, Dane. And, and his girlfriend here in the, in the commentary box is singing the... You can probably hear over the microphones. Shory, Todd Carney wasn't out on the field there. He, he did the job as a coach. But who was your man of the match for today? Man of the match, uh, Batiste had a really good game out of out of uh, dummy half. Also, I'd have to say Ben Crawford. You know, their kicking game was really good, but I don't think they would have won it without Dylan Montgomery up in the forwards leading the charge. Just gives the rest of the players uh, a lot of a lot of momentum and confidence. Also, you know, I think it was a real good team effort. Not too many people stood out. Mitchell Krause had a real good game. Gabe Belcher with that try. It was a really good, strong uh, performance throughout the whole park. So, as I mentioned, now Byron Bay Red Devils will now go in with this, with their tails up against the Mullumbimby Giants, who then themselves have got a, got the wood over Byron in previous years. So, I think the Mullumbimby Giants have got three wins on the fly against Byron in, if, if you go into last season. Maris Brothers now, for the well, I guess the only consolation you can take from them after having a you know a decent win against Northern United last week is they've got the bye now. They can regroup, but the task does not get easier when they've got the Mulumba Mustangs in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, it'll be hard for them, but they'll go back and regroup. There's some positives they can take out of this, work on those, and try to get a win. They get a home game next week. Uh, so no, Maris Brothers have the the, the buy. Then, yeah, then yeah, the buy. Then, then, then so, uh, so they've got a couple of weeks to regroup and get the bodies fit and whatnot. So as you can see, there it is full time here at Red Devil Park, Byron Bay 38 to the Maris Brothers Rams 10. For the team here at MGM Sports and the N Triple RL, Michael Shaw. I'm Dwayne Neville. It's an absolute pleasure bringing you more N Triple R action. We'll be back on deck next week. Dwayne Neville signing off. Air at Byron Bay. Have a good evening. Over and out.